Bill, warrior of the woodland, struggling against extreme odds, traveling dangerous trails, fighting the many enemies of nature. This is the job of the guardian of the forest, Ranger Bill. Pouring rain, freezing cold, blistering heat, snow, floods, bears, rattlesnakes, mountain lions. Yes, all this in exchange for the satisfaction and pride of a job well done. You know, boys and girls, we're an awfully take-it-for-granted lot now, aren't we? <laughs> sure we are. We take the sun for granted, but what if it stopped burning and sending its beneficial warmth and rays upon the earth? We take God for granted. What if he should turn his face against us? What if he took away his counsel and guidance? Remember, from the books of Malachi to Matthew, God didn't reveal himself to man. God was silent. What if he were to be silent toward us today? Oh, but God wouldn't do that, we say. Or would he? There are a lot of tragic things that occur to man, but today we're going to hear about the most tragic of all. The man who lost God. A series of events took place in Naughty Pine that were very confusing, to say the least. That is, until we got all the parts of the puzzle put together and were able to fit them. It's a Sunday morning now, and church is over. He comes right to the point. Morning, Sven. Oh, hello, Mary. How's your father? Bill. Oh, huh? hiya, Sid. Glad you would be out. Bill? Yes, Bill. What's on your mind? Did you notice the man who came in late? He sat way back in the corner. Uh, with the heavy beard? Yes, that's right. He left right after the benediction, uh -huh. even before the pastor got back to the door. Oh, yeah, he's a stranger around here, Henry. I've never seen him before. I wonder who he is, why he comes in late and leaves early. Well, if he doesn't want to talk with folks, that's his business, pal. Sure, but well, even old Hermit Harry talks to folks on Sunday morning. Well, this guy doesn't want to talk to a soul. Stumpy, I can see smoke on top of Ranger Back Ridge. Huh? You can, huh? Yeah, it must be a campfire, because there ain't nothing to burn up there otherwise. I'll say there isn't. Just the same, you know what to do. Yep. I'll take care of it, young feller. I'll have the plane go over and take a look. That gray wolf is flying patrol right now. Okay, I'll be talking to you. Bye. 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 -bye. Stumpy the Grey Wolf! Range 1 to Patrol 5! Come in! Patrol 5 to Ranger 1. Come in, Stumpy. Uh, Tom reports smoke on top of Razorback Ridge. You better say, show you over and take a look. Uh, I'll do right away. We'll call you back in ten minutes. I'll be waiting. Over and out. Are you playing with the radio, old-timer? Yeah, uh, sure am. Ever since I was a boy, I wanted to play with the radio. This was my chance while you fellers were gone. <laughs> okay, old friend. Uh, what's up, if anything? Hey, uh, Tom just called in about smoke on top of Razorback Ridge. I asked Grey Wolf to take a look. He said he'd call back in ten minutes or so. Well, there's nothing on top of Razorback Ridge to burn, unless you can burn rock. Yeah, it's probably just a campfire. Routine check. Moose McBain. Hello, Moose. Uh, good to see you, Moose. Howdy, Moose. Oh, boys, this is just like Moose come home again. <laughs> you fellas warm up Moose's heart. She feels good to come to old friend. Now, drag over a chair and sit down, Moose. You look like you're eating pretty good, Moose. <laughs> Moose eat very good. Traps work hard and give Moose good catch. Uh, now, Moose, take it easy. Come warm weather. Fix up house. How are you boys? 
Ah, they grow big and strong like young tree. They're good Christians, too. Oh, that's mighty fine. I uh, take it by the look on your face, this isn't a social call, Moose. Uh, you're right, Bill. Maybe Moose finds something pretty hot, maybe it's nothing. Moose think he better come and tell you. All right, go ahead. Maybe somebody try burn up animals in mountain. Maybe animals have hoof and mouth disease. Moose, you think somebody's trying to destroy animals that have hoof and mouth disease? Yes. Moose find burned carcass of animals on top of Razorback Ridge. You shouldn't have come in here. Then you might have it on your shoes. No. Moose see smoke and go look. I stay far away because I think about hoof and mouth disease first. Did you see man or men? Nobody. Let's get our rubber gear together, men, and ride out to Razorback Ridge. There's place ahead. Hold up, fellows. Oh, 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 I'll get your rubber coats and hats, gloves and boots on, fellas. Now, Moose, you stay here. Sorry I haven't got an extra set of gear for you. Oh, that's all right. <laughs> Why, get that up with somebody's going to be in serious trouble. This is off in a mouth disease and they didn't report it. It's, uh, I'm ready. So, uh, yeah, I'm ready, too. All right, let's go take a look at those carcasses. cattle and sheep here. Remember now, don't accidentally touch your face after you've handled these carcasses. Let's look around. Oh, what a mess. <laughs> Amateur work. These critters don't look diseased to me, sonny. And they not have hoof and moth disease. I agree. These were healthy animals. Oh, boy. Well, that's a load of grief gone. You said it, pal. What... What do you think's going on up here? That's a mighty good question, Sonny, a mighty good one. Well, let's go back to the horses and get this hot rubber gear off. I guess old Moose didn't act so smart as he thought he did. Chase your way out here for nothing. Not at all, Moose. You did the right thing. I suppose you had been right. Maybe that's one way to look at it. Why you take off to sunlight? Uh, I wonder why, too. Whoever's doing this butchering probably was watching us. Probably saw a moose come along, then hightailed it for town. Well, we aren't going to accomplish a thing. Can't track the person or persons over the rocks. Moose think you're right. Sure, he's right. What are you going to do, young fella? Just let it go? Have you got any better idea, Stumpy? Maybe those are stolen animals. Oh, I not see brand marks on cattle. That a boy, Gray Wolf. Gentlemen, there's not a thing we can do until somebody files a complaint. As far as I can see, nobody's broken the law. You say right. There's no law against butcher animals as long as you not steal them. For animals, take animals out of season or over limit. Well, do you suppose that's the fire that Tom saw? Yes, I do, pal. It doesn't add up. I'll be patient. It will sooner or later. How do you do, sir? I'm Orville Fenton, private eye. Here's my credentials. May I see them, Mr. Fenton? Sure, feast your eyes. Mm-hmm. Thank you. Well, what can we do for you, Mr. Fenton? No, forget the mister. Just call me off. I hear you're the big Johnny Law out this way. Within my jurisdiction, I am. I am the chief ranger. Our job is to take care of the forests. Enforcing the law is secondary, but we do it with a vengeance when it's necessary. Uh, you Wild West cops kill me. Big heroes. Oh, see here, Mr. Eastern dude. One more wisecrack like that and you'll go flying out of here on your ear. We ain't no Wild West cops. We ain't no heroes. We get paid and paid good. Okay, okay, Daddy-O. Listen, you young ah, whippersnapper. Hey, stumpy, Stumpy, calm down. <laughs> it's not worth it to get angry with, man. Say what's on your mind. Sure, sure. A uh, big family back east has got a middle-aged son. He's missing, and they seem to figure he might have had the urge to go west, young man, you know? That right. Uh, what's with the phone? 
Let's be patient. I'm checking with the sheriff. Cal, uh, Bill, have you got a missing person on a middle-aged eastern man? Mm-hmm. Thanks, Cal. Sure. Goodbye. No soap, huh? That's right. No, I could have told you that. Family wants to keep this quiet, prominent name and all that sort of stuff, you know. Why did he disappear? I don't know. Everything was fine, and all of a sudden, he just took off. Like that. What makes you think he came out here? No, I have my own private reasons. Yeah, you want help, but you won't help us, huh? Why we do job, you get paid to do. Yeah, and probably a pretty handsome salary. Uh, retainer, man. Retainer. Hello, Bill speaking. There's a fire on top of Eagle's Roost. Uh, burning rocks again, oh, Tom? Another one. Could be. Larry's flashing me. He sees it, too. What do you want us to do? Just sit tight. Report any more if they occur. Yes, sir. Uh, where this time, Bill? Eagle's Roost. This is getting the earmarks of a humdinger. Do you suppose it was for the same reason? We'll have to find that out. Say, what are you fellas trying to do? Give me the double whammy? What are you talking about? It's not like a bunch of squares. Personal secrets, Orv. Uh, you know how it goes. Okay, okay, I dig you. Well, let me go back to the hotel and clean up. I'll come back and level with you guys. All right, uh, can you ride a horse? Mm, sure. Uh, we'll take a ride when you get back. Make it snappy. Right. Bill, what about this private eye? Well, what about him, pal? Well, he seems to be pretty much of a wise guy to me. Oh, I don't think so. I don't agree, sonny. I'll back Henry's idea. Listen, fellas. It looks like we're going to have enough problems without one over Orful. He talks like that all the time. That's his language. Oh, you're right, Bill. I feel that way, too, after he talk a while. We're just not used to his lingo out here. Right, and he's not used to ours. I think he's all right. Here I am. Let's go. Good idea. Come on, fellas. Look at that. The same thing. A burned carcass of cattle and sheep. I'm telling you, this is getting weird. What's the purpose of all this? It looks to me like somebody's flipped his lid or something. What kind of a clod would do this? Why do you guys drag me all the way up here just to see these smelly carcasses? Ugh. You'll catch on after a while. Well, what are you doing with your glasses? You can't spot anybody up here. I'm trying to pick out the next spot where this will take place. Huh? You sound like you got an idea as to what's going on, young feller. Oh, I'll say he does. Just be patient, fellas. I'll tell you in due time. I don't dig this at all. Keep your pajamas on, sonny. You'll dig us sooner or later and it won't take a shovel to do it. <laughs> where do you think, Bill? That flat ridge to the right of Straight Up Mountain. That'll be the next place. Are you sure? Yep. Well, let's get back to town. We've got to be over there before noon tomorrow. I just don't dig you, Squares. Everything's a mystery. There ain't no rope tied to you, Orville. You can skedaddle any time you want, since you ain't got much use for us Squares. Take it easy, Daddy-o. Got an idea that number one ranger knows or suspects something that might have to do with what I'm after. I'd be the square if I left now. Isn't that right, oh chief of the Secret Service? Personal secrets, Orv. Uh, you know how it goes. Why, my trolley must really be sagging down to hang around with you Wild West badge toters. <laughs> be patient, Private Eye. Just be patient. You'll find out that us Johnny Laws out here usually know what we're doing. Well, it's pain, man. Real pain. But I'll bear under it. These secrets are killing me, though. So do yours. Let's get going. We'll stop here. Oh, 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 boy. Oh, oh, girl. How far do we have to walk? Two miles. What did you bring the horses for? Use your head for more than a hat rack, sonny. We got to sneak up on that flat ridge, engine style, if we're going to find out anything. Engine style? I don't know anything about that. You follow me and walk the way I do. You learn. All right, let's get going. We haven't got too much time. Somebody's coming. Great day in the morning. Look at 
that feller? He looks like an Old Testament priest. You have two sheep and steer. He got wood strapped on the back of steer. Look, he carry Bible. Shh, quiet, everybody. He's making a hot fire. Yeah, look at that butcher knife. He's making an Old Testament sacrifice. He's reading his Bible, praying. That guy's crazy as a loon. He's really off his rocker. Shh, you fellas. You let him butcher steer too. He's not committing a crime. Boy, oh boy. This is just like being back in the time of Moses. Let's leave here quietly, fellas. Don't make a sound. That's an order. <laughs> We'll sit here until the horses drink their fill. How come you haven't said a cotton-picking word since we left that crazy man up there? You really think he is out of his mind, don't you, Oh, what a clod. Certainly he's crazy. He's nutty than a fruitcake. I'm inclined to agree with Orville for once. That sure looks strange. I don't know what to think. Who am I to say the man's insane? I'm not afraid to say it. I think you ought to pick him up. On what charge, Private Eye? Well, he's a menace to the public. How? Well, okay, what's your explanation? I think he's looking for God. Looking for God? Man, what has religion got to do with this? Don't you recognize the Old Testament sacrifice ritual? <laughs> Now, what would a Seamus like me be doing with a Bible? Bill, what you say make plenty of good sense. Like ducks. Okay, but why the sacrifice? I don't know. But, pal, did you recognize him? No, I can't say that I... Wait a minute. The beard. Mm -hmm. The man in the back of the church last Sunday. Right. Well, knock me over with a feather. What now? We'll meet this gentleman after church next Sunday morning. Uh, excuse me, sir. Yes, Mr. Jefferson. How do you do? Uh, you know my name. Oh, yes. I also know what you want to talk about. Oh. Well, you see, I saw you and your men visit two of the places on the ridges. Well, that doesn't surprise me, Mr. Uh... Noah Thomas, Mr. Jefferson. Noah! Hey, he's... Henry, don't embarrass the gentleman. Oh, it's quite all right. Under the circumstances, I can understand his surprise. Noah, I'd like you to come to dinner with us. There's my mother, Henry, and myself, and two of my aides and personal friends. Uh, we'd like you to join us. It's our usual practice to invite strangers to dinner. Well, thank you, Mr... Uh, let's make it Bill. Well, thank you, Bill. I'd be glad to come. That sure was good. I appreciate this dinner invitation more than you know. I lead a rather lonely life, and my cooking gets tiresome. It's not the best. Oh, you're very welcome. It's our privilege. Let's go into the living room and chat a while, huh? I got the big easy chair! <laughs> <laughs> okay, Sandy. <Sophie. laughs> <laughs> Boy, am I full. <laughs> you speak truth, Henry. <laughs> you've, uh, you've been very kind, Bill. I'm sure you want an explanation about my actions. Uh, yes, uh, we observed your uh, third sacrifice, Noah, uh, unknown to you, of course. Sacrifice? Oh, but of course you recognized it. That doesn't surprise me. Bill, to be very blunt and to the point, I've lost God. Why don't you start from the beginning? All right. I'm a highly educated man, Bill. I have five degrees, three doctorates and two masters. When I was a teenage lad, the Holy Spirit dealt with me about my sinful soul. I turned him down. I was too young, I said. When I was in college, 
The Holy Spirit talked with me again at great length. I turned away. I'm too intelligent, I said, and too busy getting an education. Five years later, the Holy Spirit dealt again with me about my sinful condition. He wrestled with me would be a better word. I didn't sleep for weeks, and I couldn't work. Finally, he left me. That was ten years ago, and God's Spirit has never dealt with me since. Not one word has he spoken to me. Now I want to accept Jesus Christ as my Savior, and I can't. How do you know you can't have salvation, Noah? For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. And the Lord said, My spirit shall not always strive with men. The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some men count slackness, but is long-suffering to usward, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. If we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. For great is the wrath of the Lord kindled against us, because our fathers have not hearkened unto the words of this book. Kiss the Son, lest he be angry, and ye perish from the way when his wrath is kindled but a little. He that heareth my word and believeth on him that sent me hath everlasting life, and shall not come into condemnation, but is passed from death unto life. If thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Cast me not away from thy presence, and take not thy Holy Spirit from me. The whole terrible truth is summed up in Romans 8.16. The Spirit itself beareth witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. Then you feel, Noah, that you've done everything that the Scriptures instruct us to do to be saved, and yet you can't receive the witness of the Holy Spirit that you are a child of God. Yes, that's right. I have truly lost God. Oh, hold on there, young feller. Seems to me that you know an awful lot about the Scriptures. It appears to me that the Holy Spirit has dealt with you and illuminated your mind and opened up the secrets of the Scriptures to you. That's right, Stumpy. But that was ten years ago. Why do you want so desperately to find God now? My time has run out, Bill. I have only days left. Hmm? I'm dying of cancer. Oh. I'm sorry. Bill, can you pray to God for me? Can you persuade him to send the Holy Spirit to me? Can you help me find God? We will pray with you, Noah. Right now. Until you receive the assurance of salvation. Can't you understand that first I've got to find God? I've lost him. His spirit has departed from me just like he did from Saul. Pray that God will send his spirit back. That's no use, gentlemen. I have grieved the Holy Spirit. It happened in the scriptures, and it's happened to me. We prayed for three hours now. Perhaps you'd like to rest while we pray on, Noah. I can't stop you from praying, but you're wasting your time. Why have you gone to the Old Testament sacrifices? A desperate man does anything he thinks might help. Moses talked with God on a mountain. Abraham went up to the mountain to offer his son. God was there. You know how many men of God have talked with him on mountains. The Lord Jesus himself drew apart from the others and talked with his heavenly Father in the mountain. And that's where I'm going. Back to the mountains. Maybe I can find God there. That's Noah's story, Orville. I thought you should know because he's the man you're looking for, isn't it? He sure is. He's wacky. Real wacky. Well, I haven't time right now to convince you he isn't. Uh, Henry, call the pastor and ask him to come quickly. Right away. Uh, Stumpy, Grey Wolf, go to the neighbors and phone the deacons and elders. They must come at once, too. All right, Bill. I'll call a Tom in from Tower 3, and he can take over headquarters until we're sure that Noah is safely in the kingdom of God. <laughs>
I'll answer, pal. Sure. Hello? Bill, I'm sorry to have to interrupt, but the seismograph shows earth tremors in this area. Uh, where in particular, Tom? Around Eagle's Roost and straight up mountain. Huh? Hey, that's where Noah's heading. We'll go right after him. Good. Get Stumpy and Grey Wolf, Henry, and come along quickly. I'm heading for the office to get Orville. I'll have the horses ready. Right. We'll split up. Stumpy, you go to Razorback Ridge. Grey Wolf, you go to Eagle's Roost. And Orville, Henry, and I'll go to Straight Up Mountain. Fire three rounds if you find him. Right. Watch the ground so it don't open up under you. I can feel them tremors and they're hitting hard. Now we'll keep our eyes open. I'm going ahead on Storm. Orville, you stay with Henry. He's not here. I hope we didn't miss him altogether. Why don't we look out for ourselves? The crazy man will make out all right. One more crack like that and I'll belt you on your private eye. Hey, he's been found. Use your glasses. It's Stumpy. Let's go. Noah, can you hear me? He's opening his eyes. I knew you'd come before I went to meet Jesus. Jesus? Then you found God? Yes. I felt the power of your prayers. I asked God for a sign just to make you. his face. He's smiling and peaceful. Yes. He found the Lord. <clears throat> what about the tremor? Was that a sign from God? Who can say, Orv? I know the Lord isn't willing that any should perish. He'll move heaven and earth if necessary to bring one of his children home. Gentlemen, I'm beginning to think that there might be something to this. It almost seems as if we're standing on holy ground and that God is here. Perhaps someone listening today is searching for God. You're in need of salvation through Jesus Christ. You've looked for God everywhere and can't find him. Well, go to your pastor or a Christian friend. They'll be glad to introduce you to our Savior and His cross. And there you will find God and peace. Well, see you next week for more adventure with 